Hi guys, I'm Steph. Thank you so much for checking out my channel today. And I'm sure you saw from that thumbnail that I have a like laundry bin size of empties. I should probably be doing empties more often than like every four months and then it'd be a bit more manageable. But I'm going to try to go through this quickly and share with you all of my empties and let you know what I would repurchase, what I don't think was worth it. So now that I finished everything up, I can kind of give you like quick little reviews and kind of my quick little thoughts on them. That being said, I had a personal goal of reaching 400 empties this year, which I realized at my last update, but now I'm fully realizing was like such a crazy outlandish goal. Like I don't know how I thought that was doable. Given that last year I only used like I think 187 things and I was like I'm going to more than double it. Like that was ridiculous. I do not know what I was thinking. I do not think I'll reach that goal. I will be like happy if I reach like 300. I counted how many empties I used last time so that was this amount and I'm going to have a tracker going over here letting you know the number of empties as I go through them and then the combined total of the empties for the year. So I've got like some random stuff. I got hair care, skincare, makeup, body care, all that stuff. So let's get into it. Okay, so starting with body care, I had this body balm by Pearl and Daisy Natural Soap Company, Summer Meadows. This is in the fragrance, Wild Rose and Lavender. It looks like this. It honestly looks like a deodorant stick. It is very sticky and it does not dry down right away. So I use this on the bottoms of my feet, which are usually really dry and cracked. So this was really good because it was like a very thick bomb and I felt like it really moisturized them, but I only put it on right before bed. I honestly like didn't love this product, but I got it as a gift for my mom, so I wanted to use it up, but not something I would repurchase. I'm just not a fan of like such a, a like applying a body moisturizer in such a deodorant stick type manner. I have lots of body lotions. So these two are both from Bath and Body Works. This one here is the Sheer Cotton and Lemonade, and I do cut these open so I can use every little thing in there. And this one was okay. It's a really nice fragrance. I love it, but I wouldn't say it was like the most moisturizing of things, but I really loved this one. This is the essential oils one. This is the almond and vanilla, natural almond, and it has olive oil in it. Again, like cut it open, used up every little thing. I love the fragrance of this one. I found it to be like super moisturizing. I would definitely love to pick up another one from this line. So I've been digging into my little hotel hoard, and these are two body lotions I have finished up. This is the Giovanni body lotion and cucumber song and this is the bath and body works one in white citrus i honestly find like hotel little thingies complimentary things usually aren't that good i use them because i have them but they're not my favorite i would never like go out and actually purchase these things but they're free so i take them i have this product from anointment this is a soothing skin ointment and it's like very very oily so again this is something i used on my feet because it is super oily like way too greasy for my hands but i loved on my feet i think it's like really nice and hydrating but like you want to put on socks or slippers like you don't want to walk around with this because I left like little footprints everywhere once and like Josh was not happy. But super duper hydrating. And I have another one of these and I will happily use it. I had this little body lotion by YSL in the Mon Perry fragrance. My mom bought me a fragrance set so it came with the fragrance, a shower gel, and the body lotion. So I used up the body lotion. I really enjoy the scent. I find that these fragrant body lotions aren't really that good for like actually moisturizing your body like they smell nice but I wouldn't say they're the most hydrating so I wouldn't go out of my way to purchase this but it was in a set so I used it. I only have one hand cream. This is from Brompton and Langley. This is the Magnolia Ginger scent. I got a gift set of these I think like two years ago and this is finally the last one I used. I really enjoyed these hand creams. I think they're really nice and fragrance they even though they're only like 100 mils they seem to last like a really really long time but this is the last one I have of these. I have like 10 more hand creams to get through, so I will not be repurchasing any at the moment. If this was given to me as a gift again, I'd gladly use it, but I wouldn't ask for it. Also from that company, I have two little shower gels. Again, I got a set of these, and I'm working on another one. Might be my last one, I'm not entirely sure. The fragrances I finished up was Orange Bergamot and Almond Milk. I much prefer the Almond Milk one. I just think this went on a lot smoother. It felt more like hydrating to the skin. Honestly, like I don't love these. I don't find that they get like very sudsy and I really like my body washes to get like super sudsy. So these are my favorite body washes, but I have them. So I'm using them. So two more out. Moving on to my hand soaps. I finished up two hand soaps. Well, not just me, Josh. This one was in the kitchen and it was such a good scent for the kitchen. This was cucumber melon and we had this one in the bathroom and it was fresh rain and spearmint. These are the foaming hand washes, which are my favorite. They smell so nice. I love the foaming hand washes. I definitely picked them up only during the sales. I will not buy Bath and Body Works unless it is 
during the semi-annual sale because it is just too pricey otherwise but I will definitely be picking up more when the December sale comes around. I didn't pick up any this time in June just because I felt like I already had too many I was trying to use to what I had but we are now on our last ones. We don't have any backup so I think it is time to purchase some more in December. And since we finished up like our pumping hand soaps, we have been working on our bars of soap, which I am so happy about because I had so many and I hate bars of soap and I still don't like them, but I'm happily working through them. So this first one was by Anointment and it kind of had some particles in it, like granulars to like, I don't know, exfoliate. I did not love it. I really dislike this one. Happy it's gone. This one was uh, Giovanni. It was a gentle cleanser. It was a facial bar, but I just used it as bar soap. It's something I picked up from a hotel. It was fine. It did the job. This one was really nice. This was from The Body Shop, and it was in the Satsuma scent, which was really nice. I found that this one lasted, like, a really long time. I enjoyed the scent of it. I felt like my hands got clean. It was a bar of soap, but I don't like bars of soap, so I wouldn't repurchase it, but it was a nice scent. Getting into oral care, I am getting rid of this toothbrush. I, like, hate it. I like the ones that have, like, the scrubby things on the back for your tongue. Anyways, this one is, like, gone. Remember, you need to switch out your toothbrushes, so... Yeah, sometimes I don't switch them out that often, but that is a good reminder. And we also finished up two toothpaste. Josh and I used to have, like, separate toothpaste, but then I kind of just, like, stopped buying it and started using his, so now we share. I don't know if he likes it or not, but that's what we do now. Anyways, the first one I used up was by Colgate. They're both by Colgate. This was the Enamel Health. Um, it was fine. This one is the Maxi Fresh One Knockout, and I much prefer this one. So this one we have repurchased and currently have another one of. And this is the one Josh picks. I always pick, like, bad toothpaste, but this one seems, like, so nice and fresh. So I think I'm going to leave the toothpaste picking to him in the future. On to some eye care stuff. I finished up this contact solution. This is the OptiFree Pure Moist. I pretty much always use OptiFree. I wear daily lenses, so I don't have to wear like soak it in solution or use it every time but sometimes if I put it into my eye and it goes in weird I like to be able to take it out and clean it with solution so instead of buying big bottles that are just going to expire I tend to just buy little ones now because something like this can actually end up lasting me like six seven months just because I don't have to like soak my lenses anymore and I finished up these eye drops these were by life brand this is in the green packaging it's the allergy eye drops I hated these they like stung my eyes the ones that are the best are in the teal packaging, which I am back to after like trying out other ones. They're like a bit more expensive, but they're worth it because those are just the best ones. So I will only repurchase the teal ones from now on. And I already have repurchased another one of these eye contact cleaners, but in a smaller container. I finished up this antiperspirant and deodorant by Mitchum. This is in the scent Shower Fresh. I really love the Mitchum ones. I think they have just like a nice clean scent and they actually feel like they last throughout the day. They say they have 48 hour protection. I feel like they really last. They actually stay on. I feel like I sweat less. Like I'm like a very sweaty person. If you've watched my last empties, I talked a lot about my sweatiness. Anyways, I really like the Mitchum ones. I'm working on another one right now and I will continue to repurchase this brand in the future. Next, we have a Febreze to go. This was an extra strength of eliminates odors and refreshments. I have probably had this for like 10 years and it's just been like moving with me everywhere I go. And I finally used it up. I don't think I really need something like this. I think we have like big bottles of Febreze. I don't really tend to use Febreze that much, which is why this lasted me like 10 years. Here I just have some pens and a highlighters I finished up. I know kind of random for an empties video, but like I said, I was trying to reach 400. That is clearly not trying to going to happen, but I'm trying to raise my goals. And like, how often do you go through a pen or a highlighter for that matter? Like never. I have been intensely studying this summer. But that being said, I also wanted to mention these because for stuff like this, I was like, oh, do I just sort out? Like, how do I get rid of it? And I was looking online and Crayola has a program where you can send stuff to them and they will recycle it. So I wanted to mention that in case you guys have any markers or highlighters or things in like this plasticky type of container and you weren't sure how to dispose of them, Crayola has a program where you can send them and recycle them. And I finished up three little tea lights. Hopefully you can see all of them here. I don't know why I'm showing it like this. Anyways, I finished up three of them. I bought like a pack of 100, so I'm slowly going through them. It's just like nice to burn them every so often. I'm enjoying the candlelit atmosphere when I remember to use them. Moving on to hair care, we don't have it too much here. I finished up this Bumble and Bumble Sunday shampoo. This is just a clarifying shampoo. It does have sulfates in it, which I find most clarifying shampoos do because that's kind of how you like clean the hair. So I only use this about once a week on Sundays. It's called Sunday shampoo. That's when I remember to use it. I kind of stopped using it when I started like coloring my hair purple just because I didn't want to like pull out the purple and when I first bleached my hair I wasn't using it super often but I find like it is really good to like kind of take away all that excess and I love using a clarifying shampoo just because I do use like so much dry shampoo and texturizing spray and like other products that I love going in with the dry shampoo. I won't repurchase this one just because it is a bit expensive and I wanted to like try out some other ones so I have a 
Moroccan oil one, I think. I purchased in like the VIB sale in the spring, so going to start going in on that one. And like the reason why I don't want to purchase this one is just because of the price. From the hotels, I had this little Bath and Body Works volumizing conditioner in this scent, Coconut Lime Verbena. It was fine. I don't think I would ever purchase like shampoo and conditioner from Bath and Body Works. Does Bath and Body Works even really sell those things? Last hair care product I finished up is the Collab Volume Extreme Dry Shampoo. This is in the fragrance Tokyo. I really like the Collab shampoos, especially the volumizing ones. I find that the regular ones just don't do enough. My hair looks greasy. The volumizing ones are good. I think the one in the orange packaging, which I believe is New York, is my favorite, but this is fine. I think this is the last Collab one I have. There was like a super sale. They were all $2, so I bought like six of them. So it's taken me a while to get through. I, I really believe this is the last one, though. So yay. If I found them again for $2, I would definitely repurchase, but I wouldn't go out of my way to purchase this. I have like a huge back stock of dry shampoo, so I'm not even thinking about it right now. I'm using a Batiste, which is like tried and true, definitely an ultimate favorite. Oh, I do have one more hair product. This is a little sample from Bumble and Bumble, and this is the Invisible Oil. And I love using putting this at the ends of my hair. It just makes them nice and smooth, and it brings back a bit of shine and life to them, especially because I dry shampoo my hair. It definitely is great for the roots, but I feel like my ends can get like really dry. So putting in that oil, if it's been a few days since I washed my hair, right after I wash my hair to kind of bring that nourishment to it, I love doing that. And I've really been in loving the Invisible Oil. I think it's definitely something I would consider repurchasing. I do have a few more samples of it, so I'm going to continue to work through that, and I do have some other hair oils in my collection, so I won't be repurchasing it right now, but in the future, if I ran up hair oil, I would definitely consider purchasing that one. Moving on to skincare, I have another pack of Con Rounds that I've gone through. These ones are from Primark. They're my favorite just because they don't fall apart, and they're the best price that I've ever found. I want to move on to reusable Con Rounds, which I've talked about. I've yet to purchase some because I still have like another package of these to go through, and the thing is, I think I'm going to start reuse, using reusable con rounds for like toner and for like my solid waters, like taking off my makeup, but I don't love the idea of using it for nail polish remover and then like maybe, I know you wash them, but like then maybe putting nail polish remover on my face, that just like makes me nervous. So I'm kind of thinking about like continuing to buy like throwaway ones for like travel and for nail polish, but maybe I should just buy two packs of reusable con rounds. If you use reusable con rounds, can you please let me know where you purchase them or like what you use and if you like them because I'm definitely looking for some good recommendations for that because I definitely want to start using them. I had this little eye mask thing. It was like, I kept the little jellies to show you. There's like the kind, they're like this and you like put it under your eye like, I don't need to demonstrate it. It like literally shows you on the package. I could have just showed you her. Anyways, these were what from Walmart. It was just an anti, it was, they said it was an anti shadow cooling eye gel mask. Honestly, it felt like really nice and relaxing. I loved it. I feel like it really plumped my under eyes because of the hydration. Do I think it like has any amazing lasting effects? No, but do I think it was like a really nice experience and I would love to do it again? For sure. Uh, I'm not going to repurchase these because I have like a pack of Peter Thomas Roth ones, like a container that came with like 60 of them. I think like 30 pairs. So don't need to repurchase them, but I do love the idea of using these. Some other mask products I used up. This is from Life Brand. This is the Pore Cleansing Facial Sheet Mask. And this is in white tea and Canadian willow herb. It was interesting to see like a pore cleansing mask as a sheet mask because when I think sheet masks, I usually think like hydrating and like plumping and I don't know. It was really, really nice. It definitely tingled a little bit. So that could be like a bit worrisome if you have very sensitive skin, but I really enjoyed this and I loved how my skin looked after it. Another mask I finished up, which is actually a multi-use mask. It's a sample, but still. This is the Mario Badesco Super Collagen Mask and I completely finished it. Um, it was green. It looked like a classic like sleepover mask. I don't know. Like when you see the movies and people wearing face masks and sleepovers, I feel like they're always green. Anyways, so this reminded me of that. Um, I thought it was decent. I tried to use it like a few times a week because that's what they suggested. I kind of wanted to see if I could get the results that they say. It was a nice experience using the mask, but I didn't notice anything like super amazing from it. I definitely wouldn't repurchase it or purchase it. It was a sample. On to some facial cleansers. I finished up the Biore Blemish Fighting Ice Cleanser. This is supposed to help breakouts and cool skin. I don't think it really helped because I was using this and I feel like I still had so many breakouts with it. So this isn't something I would want to repurchase. I love testing out new cleansers and everything. And if I found something that I thought looked worked amazing, like I loved, I would probably consider repurchasing it at some point in the future. But this, I don't think I ever need to try again. This one is by Life Brand, and this is the Clear Action Oil-Free Foaming Scrub, and this is in pink grapefruit. So it has tiny little extracts in it for like exfoliating, but I didn't feel like it was harsh enough to actually exfoliate, but I wasn't sure if I loved the idea of using something like this on a daily basis. This also has salicylic acid in it. So I have a exfoliating thing. I really don't know how to describe it. It's from the body shop, 
and it's like a gel and you put it on and then it like beads up all the dead skin but then all the dead skin gets stuck in the baby hairs all over your face so then I would go in with this to kind of like wipe away all the dead skin and exfoliate it that way because it wasn't actually harsh enough to do any good exfoliating on its own but then I so paired together it was really good so I finished this up and I still have the body shop one and I tried using it the other day and I was just like a little ball like there was just little balls all over my fuzz so not really great don't want to do that again so not sure how I'm going to finish up that product because I'm not going to purchase this just to like finish that so I got to figure out a way to use that one but the point is I finished this one but I would not repurchase it because I just don't think it was exfoliating enough for like actually exfoliating and not something I would want to use every day speaking of exfoliators I finished this product from Superdrug this is the tea tree facial cleansing pack and they have tea tree and peppermint oil and one they're like both rough one side's a bit rougher than the other I love these they come in a container of 40 and oh my gosh this is like the best thing ever they just like really get in there give you like a good deep scrub like you feel like you're just gonna like everything out of your face like it just feels so clean I love this I have another one like when I was in the UK last summer I picked up another one because I like I couldn't finish this one without having a backup because I love it that much so I was like stopping using it anyways bought a backup last summer so I finished this one still have that one would like repurchase forever and ever I'm going to be in London soon well you're watching this video I'm already in London have been in London currently in London somewhere around there and I may or may not pick up another one of those because I love it that much also to help with acne we have the juice beauty organic solution blemish clearing serum and this had salicylic acid I believe in it as the active ingredient and I feel like this did nothing for my skin I would say like these last few months my skin has like not been great and none of the products I have used have really helped it I have noticed it getting worse when I stop doing everything so it was definitely better than doing nothing but in terms of like my acne actually like clearing up or anything I really didn't notice anything so pretty much all the skincare products I have been using for the last like three four months I would not recommend so I don't feel like this really did anything to help with my acne so I would definitely not pick it up again this product is from the ordinary this is their lactic acid 5% plus HA 2% and I use this kind of like once in a while for exfoliating purposes. I thought it was decent enough. Not sure I would go out and repurchase it. I don't really think so. I do like The Ordinary in the fact that they are cost effective. So you can try some ingredients and see if those actives work for you. For this, I don't think if this was necessarily strong enough for me or I did enough that I would want to go out and repurchase this specific one. But I'm glad I got to test out that product and see if that active worked for me. So I definitely like that aspect of the brand. I've done a whole review on a bunch of ordinary products, so I'll link that down below in case you're interested. But I don't think I will pick up this specific one again. I have a few more ordinary products. This one is the Grand Active Retinoid 2% Emulsion. It was previously called Advanced Retinoid 2%. This was fine. I don't know. I don't really know what it was supposed to do. Look, I have the container right here. This says it is supposed to textural irregularities and signs of aging. So I feel like the claim signs of aging, it is really hard to tell if the product is actually doing what it claims because like the whole point is you're not supposed to see a difference. And as for textural irregularities, I feel like my face got a lot of texture. So not sure this was it for me. I know retinoids or retinols are supposed to be like so amazing. So maybe I need a stronger one. I know your skin can kind of like take some getting used to and then you have to go up I don't I say I know I don't know but I would consider going back to the ordinary to pick up maybe like a higher percentage retinol because I think that is a good ingredient and I know that my skin doesn't react poorly to it as in like I have a bad reaction but like clearly it don't react well because it didn't work the ordinary product that I finished that I love is the rose hip oil this is so nice I miss it so much I finished it like a few months ago and I have been missing it throughout the summer you would think oil in the summer for some of the oily skin I needed it I love it I feel like that really helps with my acne it just like makes my skin calm and some of the times you're oily because your body overproduces the oil because it doesn't think that you have enough hydration so having an oil like rose hip oil for oily skin actually works really nicely to stop you from being so oily so this is definitely something I'm going to repurchase and now that I've like finished up a bunch of skincare I feel like I can purchase a few more things so I'm definitely going to be going to the ordinary soon well not that soon probably like October and pick some stuff up and speaking about some more moisturizers I finished up this one this is from Nivea this was the Q10 plus this was the anti-wrinkle and energy goodnight cream was the vitamin C cream for the evening I usually tend to use vitamin C products in the morning 
Anyways, I did not like this at all. I don't think it helped with anti-wrinkles. I don't think it helped with energy. I don't think it was like a very good vitamin C thing. I would open it like it would just keep oozing out like the product was like so badly, like the packaging is just not good. And in terms of that, I think it was this product when I was using it. I wasn't sure it was this product, but I was having a lot of like discoloration on my neck. Like my neck was straight up like yellow and I could not figure out why. Legitimately like thought I was dying and had a disease. And I just think it was this product oxidizing. You would think, just stop using the product, see if you still have the... But, like, I just... I didn't use it every single day at one point. But I felt like I was still noticing it. It could have just been remnant effects. Could have been my imagination. I don't know. Pretty sure it's this product. Because as soon as I finished up, I have not had that yellowing issue. So, the grievances it caused me, I don't think it worked. And, like, the annoying packaging. Like, I would, I would not repurchase this. I would not recommend it. I'm happy that I got it for free and not spend my money on this. But, like, it, I was really freaking out there for a while. The product I loved... This is the Drunk Elephant Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. I just had a little, basically a deluxe size sample because of a kit I had bought in December for like the vitamin C serum and then it came with like all these things. And I love this so much that I went out and purchased the full size. I, like, it, it's finished. I love this little cream so much. It just feels so, so nice and luxurious. I love it. And because I was trying to hit such a high number of empties, you know I was using up them samples. So to quickly go through those. This is the Sephora Cleansing Cream. This is supposed to like remove your makeup. And for that, I really liked it. I don't think it works. Like it's a cleansing cream. I only use this to remove my makeup. I actually thought this worked really nicely. I'm consider purchasing this in the future. This is the Laneige Water Bank Moisture Cream. It was really, honestly, it felt like you're putting water on your face. Like it says it's infused with hydro ionized mineral. Like it's, it's, it's fancy water. And I'm sure it's probably expensive because it was Laneige. So I would not purchase this. This is the Elginist Ultimate Anti-Aging Cream, and honestly, I don't really remember anything about it, which kind of tells you how unremarkable it was, so would not repurchase that or purchase it. This is a Glanco Super Matte Clearing Mask. I think I have another one in here. Yeah, I used two of these. These are really nice for what I wanted them to be, which was kind of like my skin. Like I said, I have oily skin. The pores were filled. Like, I just wanted a mud mask to kind of, like, absorb everything, and these did a good job. I feel no need to purchase these because Sephora, like, only gives these the samples. I have, like... 10 more at least. Like, no joke. So, definitely don't need to repurchase this. I will continue to use them. I don't think I would ever buy Glango Mask though because they are so expensive. I used up this Tarte Hydrating Boost Moisturizer. I actually thought it was really nice. Like, I feel like everyone thinks about them for makeup, but they have some really nice skincare stuff. So, I've never purchased any Tarte skincare, but I'd be interested in getting maybe like a set for the holidays if they do one. That's something I would consider purchasing. This is the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Face Mask. This was nice. I like, honestly, I don't remember it enough. I wasn't like, oh, I need to purchase that. This was the Caudalie Moisturizing Sorbet. This was just a face cream. It was fine. Don't think I'd repurchase. This was the Bosha Cleansing Oil Gel. I did not like this. I just don't think it's like the type of product for me. It was like an oil or gel. Like, it was just, it was a weird consistency. I didn't love it. And I don't think it did such a great job of taking my makeup off. So I was traveling in Hungary recently. If you want to know what makeup I took with me, I did a little travel makeup bag, so I'll link that down below, and I brought these little things. So this is like Clinique pack, it's the same thing twice, I'll just show you here. So it comes with the first step, which is the cleanser. I've used all this before, this is like for the oily skin, I used to like really follow this program and I did like it, so it was nice to go back to it. It's kind of like my, if my skin was like really, really freaking out, I think Clinique is something I would go back to. Um, simple products are something that I would go back to, but it's not really readily available in Canada, but I love the simple line. I think that's an amazing one. Um, anyway, so this is the cleanser. It's like fine. It's for oily skin. I do like it. This is like a toner I really enjoy. This is the Clinique Clarifying Lotion one in three. I think this does a really nice job. There's some toners I'm like, is this really doing anything? But I feel like this one actually does. And this is the Clinique Moisturizer this is the gel one, so it's in a yellow bottle. Well, I mean, it's just a sample, but it comes in a yellow bottle, and the gel one is for oily skin, and they have, like, a super-duper creamy one. So I love that it has, like, for oily skin or for dry skin. I really like the Clinique system, so I had, like, all of these. So this is just the same thing again, so that's six empties right there. And lastly, from Anointment, I had this Herbal Clay Cleanser. It came in this little container right here, so it was just a bunch of powder, and you would, like, pour it into your hand and add water and then put it all over your face, and I hated it. Oh, my gosh. There's, like, so many little things in here and I don't know what they're doing and why they're there. It was just a mess to get all over your face and a mess to clean up and I did not like it. I would not repurchase it. I don't ever want to see it again. If for somehow another one of these samples came into my collection, I would just give it back to where it came from. Like I really did not like this. And all of that was in this President's Choice Dirty Chai Black Tea container. I love this tea so much. 
I don't know why I started including teas in here because like we have so many teas we like never get through them so when we get through them it's like pretty impressive and I love this one the dirty chai one it like smells like coffee and kind of tastes like coffee but it's tea so you don't have to go through like the whole process of making coffee which I love anyways we don't have any more at the moment but I feel like I really need to get them so last but not least, here are my makeup empties. First, I'm going to start with my little perfume samples I have finished up. If you want a more in-depth thought on these, I talked about them in my perfume project. Yeah, my perfume project pan, so I'll link that down below in case you're interested. But just to tell you quickly what I finished, this was the Calvin Klein CK2. We have Dolce Gabbana Light Blue, Ermine Gildo Zegna Italian Bergamot, Atelier Cologne The Mandarin Glass Seal, Le Lenville de Cartier, Marc Jacobs Decadence. Sorry if you could not understand what half those were because of my terrible pronunciation. And to quickly comment on them, none of them are really standouts for me. Recently, I did a full face using makeup samples. So if you're interested to see how these next products looked on my face and what a full face of makeup samples can look like, I'll link that video down below. But since then, I've continued to use these products and have finished them up. So I have this little Bite Agave lip mask. I really enjoyed it. This little sample lasted me about three uses, so that was a really good idea to get use of it. I would really consider purchasing up the Agave lip mask. Purchasing up? I would really consider purchasing the Agave lip mask. I do have the Laneige one currently, so I'm not in the market for one, and I have a few more samples, so I won't be purchasing it right now, but I really did enjoy it, and I felt like, I like it better than the Laneige one. I felt like my lips actually felt hydrated in the morning because the product sunk in. Next, I have the Born This Way foundation. This was my shade. This is vanilla. That is not my shade. But I mixed it in with some stuff, so I was able to use it. At first, I didn't really like it. And to be honest, my thoughts didn't really change. I got to use this about like four times, so because I was mixing it, maybe that kind of changed it. So the first time I used it, I didn't mix it. And I just didn't love it. I felt like the coverage wasn't really there. I feel like you could still see, like, it was fine you could still see my freckles, but I feel like you could see, like, all my acne. Like, you could just see all my discoloration and spots, and, like, it's not... It's not the foundation for me. Next product was from Lancer, Danny Glowing Skin Perfector. I have no idea. I did not like this. I felt like it did nothing. I used it as a highlighter in that video. I tried mixing it with foundation. I tried using it like as a glowy primer. Like I just didn't love how it looked. And then I have the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. And this is actually the first time I ever used this. So I never really used such a silicone primer before. I really liked it. Um, the first time I used it, it like really just like makes everything slide on really nicely. At first it felt like a bit heavy and a bit match when I used it all over my face. The next time I used it, I did like, it was like three primers. I'm like a little extra. I did the Benefit Professional like pores, um, smile line around like my nose and I pointed here for a smile line, didn't I? My forehead wrinkle and my smile line. I'm getting tired. And then I used the Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot, which is a mattifying primer on the majority of my forehead, my chin and my nose. And then I used the Smashbox one kind of just like on the outer perimeter, which like I know is like a little bit of excess. But I ended up really loving it that way. So I think like that primer for me is like a bit heavy and like feels a little too greasy and slippery when it's over the whole face. But when it's certain areas, I found that it really helped my foundation glide on really nicely. And in that video, I also used the NARS Laguna Bronzer. I really like this. It made me want to purchase it. I loved the shade so much. I thought it went on so nicely. And that was my first time ever trying it. And I really, really liked it. So I would consider repurchasing that one. And then this was from Lancome. This was the Dual Finish Multitasking Powder and Foundation All-in-One. And it was kind of cool. It came with this. So I used that up and I just used it to kind of set my face. And it was decent, but it had a really strong fragrance. So it made me not want to purchase it. I'm done with this Real Techniques makeup sponge. I really like the Real Techniques ones. I like this shape. I like how smushy they get. And I thought this was going, it seemed like it wasn't going to last me when I first started using it, but it ended up lasting me quite a while and it's just kind of getting like holes and tears in it. I'm not sure if you can see that. So it's time to just let it go. I've now moved on to a Morphe sponge and I am not loving that as much as I love this one. So I definitely would purchase more Real Technique sponges in the future. So this I had to put in a plastic container because like, so hopefully you can tell, like I, I don't know if you can tell, I, I use this lip gloss up. There's just stuff sticking around to the edges and then the cap kind of broke. So it's just kind of like gushing everywhere, but I like you used all the product basically besides what is on the, I used all the usable product. So this was the Soap and Glory Mother Pucker. This was just in the shade Natural, I believe. And I really like this. I don't think it actually like did anything to make my lips like tingly and like plumping, but I really loved how this looked. It smelled like chocolate. It was a really nice experience. Next, I finished up the Milani Make It Last setting spray. I thought this did a decent enough job. I don't think it prolonged my makeup as long as the Urban Decay All Nighter. So for that reason, I wouldn't repurchase it. From Primark, we have the PS Pro Lip Scrub. This 
smelled really nice. I liked it. I thought I did a decent enough job scrubbing my lips. I kept it in the shower with me. I really liked it. I thought it was a reasonable price. I would consider picking it up. I have a Jeffree Star lip scrub I'm using now, so I'm not in the market for one. And there's no Primarks here. And I don't think I'll purchase one when I'm in the UK just because I feel like that Jeffree Star one is going to last me a long time. And my preferred method is actually the Elf one, which comes in a bullet. I feel like that's so much easier than having to dig your finger in. But I liked it and it worked. And because of the price, I honestly think I would purchase it at some point if I needed a lip scrub and I had a Primark. Next we have the Rimmel Stay Matte. I completely finished this. I had hit paint on it last year and then I ended up just going through it and finishing it up this year. I don't love the Rimmel Stay Matte. I know a lot of people say it's like such a great mattifying powder, but for me I don't think it like was that great at mattifying but still looked heavy. I felt like I still looked oily. Like I just, this is not my favorite powder. I did a whole video on like battle of pressed powders at the drugstore, so link that down below if you want to hear some other powders that I have tested out and what I think works better than this. I finished up this It Cosmetics Vitality Lip Flush in Je Ne Sais Quoi. I actually like dug right down in there and scooped everything out. I kind of just use this as a lip balm. It's supposed to like, I don't know how it works, but it like basically becomes pink. It's clear, but then it goes on pink or it's supposed to like adjust your pH, whatever, whatever it's supposed to do. Anyways, it's like so pink. I don't love how the shade looks, so I actually just ended up using it as a lip balm. Another lip product I finished up, this is the ColourPop of Echo Park. And to be honest, so this is where my markings ended. I had it in a project pan. And then I just had to take it out because it had gone off, but I got all the way down here, so I'm considering this an empty because I use this so much, but it is smells so bad, I don't feel comfortable putting it on my lips anymore. I used it in the winter, and I think the shade was really nice for that time of year. The Makeup Forever, and this was in the shade N9 in the Rouge Artist Natural, and I'm kind of sad I fell in love with this because it's been discontinued, but like a while ago, which kind of shows you how old this is. This is just the plastic, so like usable product, like... It is flush with the container. I really love this shade, and I'm really happy that I got to use it before it went off. It was smelling a bit waxy there, but I powered through. And two products from number seven. The first is the Match Made Concealer. This was in the shade Calico, and again, I like completely dug in there and finished every little bit out. I loved this concealer so much. I loved it putting it under my foundations for a little bit of extra coverage. I loved it when I didn't want to do a whole full face makeup, but I still want to cover up those imperfections. Just putting this all over the face and kind of blending it out. I didn't feel like I needed to put a foundation over top of, or I could go in with something that was like very light coverage and just use this. I just really like this product. I would 100% repurchase it. I am like really considering picking up another tube of this when I am in the UK because I love it that much. Even though I'm like, I shouldn't because I have like other complexion products and I don't need it, but like it's so like it. I really, really like this one. And my favorite foundation, which I will not be picking up when I'm in the UK, but this is the number seven Stay Perfect Foundation. I love this. This is in the shade Calico. It kind of has like a grayish undertone, but I actually think it looks works really well for me, and I love it. I'm not going to be picking it up because I have a lot of foundations, and even though I am working through some, there's another foundation I want to pick up when I'm in the UK, so I'm not going to repurchase this one right now because there's another one I want to test out, but I can totally see myself picking this up again in the future. I love it. And the last little makeup product we have is a little mascara sample. This is the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Extreme Lash Multiplying Volume Mascara. It worked fine. I enjoyed it while I had it. I thought it made my lashes look pretty big. They did were a bit wet. I felt like there was a lot of transfer with it. It didn't make me want to purchase it at all. I was like excited when I could move on to the next mascara, to be honest. So there you have it. That is my empties. I have now finished, in total, this many. So don't think I'll be making it to 400 this year, but I am happy with the amount of products that I have been able to work through. And I definitely have worked through more than I purchased because I have really not purchased that much this year. So pat on the back. Yay me. If you like the empties videos, then make sure you subscribe. There will definitely be another one coming to my channel soon. There's already some products that I have that are like part of the way finished up and I don't know if I'm going to be waiting again until December and have this many to go through again because that is a lot. So you can probably expect another empties video at the beginning of a November, end of October type area and I would love it if you would subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are. Bye!